Welcome back to our lecture introduction to quantum optics. Today we want to discuss the simple case of a single radiation field mode interacting with a single quantized atom and look at the time evolution of such a coupled quantum system that we can arrive at and how this can be very different from the one that we looked at in the semi-classical solutions. Let's get started. So here's the James Cummings Hamiltonian which describes the interaction of our atom given by this Hamiltonian here the radiation field given by the Hamiltonian here, I've dropped the index k because we're just discussing the interaction with the single radiation field mode, so this will save us some writing, and I've also dropped the ground state energy plus one half, and this is the light atom interaction Hamiltonian that we had derived in the previous lectures where I have my absorption and emission processes present in this coupling in the rotating wave approximation. So in order to solve for the time evolution of the system, it's convenient to switch to the so-called interaction picture, where I transform my Schrödinger state vector, which contained all the time evolution, into the interaction frame by kind of reversing the time evolution of the free Hamiltonian, and the free Hamiltonian, that's just given by the sum over the atomic Hamiltonian and my radiation field Hamiltonian, because that would be there even if there's no interaction between the light field and the Hamiltonian. That's the trivial time evolution I get for a system, and we're not interested in that. We're just interested in this additional time evolution. So remember, that's actually a trick we already used very similarly in the first lectures when we were discussing the semi-classical light atom description. So we transform into the interaction picture, and now we can have uh, the time evolution in this interaction picture is just given by a Schrödinger equation for this state vector in the interaction picture and now our interaction Hamiltonian which has become time dependent due to the transformation into the interaction uh, picture. So this is the interaction Hamiltonian in the interaction picture. So we have the A dagger sigma processes, A sigma dagger processes. Like before, they're only now dressed with these detuning terms with delta being the frequency of the light field minus the resonance frequency of the atom. And now if I want to calculate the time evolution, we can start again by writing down a general ansatz wave function for an arbitrary quantum state of the system. And a complete basis state, of course, of this system would be formed by all the basis states where I have n photons in my photon field, the atom in the ground state, and n photons and the atom in the excited state. And this goes, of course, over all photon numbers that I can have. So this is a complete basis set, and I can expand any wave function in this basis with complex expansion coefficients c1 n of t and c2 n of t that we have to solve for now, that we have to find solutions for, given initial conditions of our light atom system. So but first, let's ask which states are actually coupled by this light atom interaction Hamiltonian. So which states are coupled to each other? Can you think yourself for a moment? Well, let's take for example the state where the atom is in the ground state with n plus 1 photons. That's going to be coupled to the state where the atom is in the excited state and I have n photons. And likewise, the state here is going to be coupled back to the state 1, n plus 1. So this would correspond to an absorption process. This is absorption. But then I can have the reverse process, which is the emission process, that can of course also occur in a very symmetric fashion that we had discussed in the previous lectures. So these two states are coupled, so we're going to find differential equations describing coupled differential equations between the expansion coefficients of the state C2n and 1n plus 1. So this is what we arrive at if I indeed take my ansatz wave function, plug it into the Schrödinger equation in this interaction picture, and derive the differential equations for the complex expansion coefficients, very similarly how we did it in the semi-classical case, I get these coupled equations here. So the amplitude of the state 1n plus 1, the derivative of that, that's coupled to the amplitude of the state C2n, and the time derivative of C2n is coupled to C1n plus 1, as we wrote down before. Now the strength of the coupling, that's given by this term g square root n plus 1, and then I have the standard detuning terms. 
Now, actually, if you go back to the original lectures on the semi-classical description, this looks very, very similar, but with a few kind of special cases that we're going to discuss now. So let's take a look at solutions of these differential equations for certain initial conditions. Let's take, for example, the case where I have n plus 1 photons in my system and the atom initially in the ground state at time t equals 0. So this would correspond to the case where I have Cn, C1, n plus 1 at time t equals 0 being equal to 1 and all the other expansion coefficients 0. Let's also consider the simple case of resonant light atom interactions. So the detuning is set to zero. And then again, just as we did before, you find solutions for these complex coefficients. And not surprisingly, they are cosinusoidal and sinusoidal solutions describing the different amplitudes in the different states. So now, if we, for example, calculate the probability of being in state one, the atom in ground state, with n plus one photons, as a function of time, that's just this complex expansion coefficient norm squared. And if I do that with this term here and use some trigonometric identities, I see that I immediately arrive at these Rabi oscillations. So these are just standard Rabi oscillations where I go with the atom being initially in the ground state and then being excited to the excited state, one photon less, then one photon more, atom in the ground state, oscillating back and forth between these two states, um, 1n plus 1 and 2n. So we have this constant oscillation of the system between the state 1n plus 1 and 2n. Now there's one important thing that you see here in these Rabi oscillations, that the Rabi frequency itself cannot take continuous values. So remember the Rabi frequency in the semi-classical case, so semi-classical, the Rabi frequency that was just dE over h bar, and since the amplitude of our electric field, of the light field impinging onto the atom could take any continuous value in the classical theory, this omega was continuous. However, we see in this quantized description that we have now for the light field, the Rabi frequency itself becomes quantized. So actually we talk about a quantized Rabi oscillation with a quantized Rabi frequency given by 2 times g square root n plus 1. So that's a very important difference. We cannot have continuous Rabi frequencies, but they'll be quantized in units of square root of n plus 1. And you can even have oscillations when n is 0. And that's the special case I want to look at next. Let's take a case where the atom is in the excited state. And initially, there's no photon in the system, in the radiation field mode. So we're dealing with a vacuum state vacuum state for the photon field, atom in the excited state. Now that would be a situation where the semi-classical equations tell us there's no time evolution of the atom. The atom is going to stay in the excited state because E field is zero, so my interaction between the light and the atom is basically zero. Not so here. You can see because we had the quantized Rabi frequency omega n, that was just 2g square root n plus 1, and even for the vacuum state, omega zero, I have a Rabi frequency given by two times g. Two times our coupling constant of the single mode of the radiation field to our atom. That means even the vacuum case, even the vacuum, can trigger Rabi oscillations between the atom and the light field. Can trigger this continuous exchange of excitation from the atomic system to the radiation field and back. So again, we look at the probability of being in the excited state with zero photons in the system. This is where we start. This is our initial state. And then after some time, we have created one photon and the atom in the ground state. And then we've come back to the state where I have the atom in the excited state and no photons in my system. That obviously happens for what time? So what is the time where this happens? 
Well, that would just happen for omega 0 times t equals to 2 pi. So t is omega 0, 2 pi over omega 0. So at this point here. And at this point here, t is just pi over omega 0. So we've swapped the excitation. So here I start with the state 2, 0, the atom in the excited state, no photons in my system. Here I am in the state 1, 1. So where I've created an atom in the ground state with one photon being emitted into that mode. And now this photon that the atom actually had emitted into the mode can be absorbed by the same atom again. So the atom goes back to the state 2, 0. So you see you have a continuous swapping of excitation between the atom and the radiation field mode. A continuous exchange of energy between those degrees of freedom that we can have, these two de de excitation degrees of freedom that we can have in the system. And this occurs even in the case where we have no light field present. And that's really an amazing situation. It's one of the most beautiful experiments in quantum optics that we're going to discuss in the next lecture. And these are the so-called vacuum Rabi oscillations. So again, if you want to think of it, they are Rabi oscillations triggered by the vacuum fluctuations of our electromagnetic field that are, of course, not present in any classical theory. So you see, even the vacuum itself can interact with an atom, can make it dynamically evolve, can make it emit a photon into the radiation field mode, and then the atom absorbs that photon back again, emits it, absorbs it, emits it, absorbs it, and we have this continuous Rabi oscillations that we can see here occurring for our expectation value of the probability of the atom being in the excited state. All right, that's all I wanted to tell you about these beautiful solutions of the Jane's Cummings model, the simple description of a single quantized radiation field mode interacting with a single atom. And in the next class, we're going to look at the case of what happens if you do this with a coherent state. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next class.